Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and I'd like to welcome you to our Bible study today. We are in Revelation chapter 7, and uh, so we've come quite a ways, but we still have quite a ways to go. I hope that you are enjoying the Bible study as much as I am. Uh, this is my Bible study, too, for myself personally. We will, if you're reading along with us through the Bible, you would be in 1 Samuel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 7. And so that's important to be reading through the Bible. Okay, let's start right away with uh, verse 1, chapter 7. And as we read about those that are going to be sealed and as witnesses for the Lord. And these are ones that are going to go into all the world and share the gospel, but they're not going to be able to be killed and they will be protected by God during that time. All right, now I do want to say something that is very important as far as who these people are not to begin with. Okay, there's a group of people called Jehovah's Witnesses in the United States and around the world. It's a false cult that's been around for some time. When we say false cult, we mean they are teaching wrong teachings from the Bible. Uh, they are not born again people. They may be nice people, just like the Mormons can be nice people and so on, but they're not on their way to heaven unless they repent of their sin and receive Jesus. And you say, well, how do you know? Uh, well, because first of all, they've changed the Bible. They have what is called the New World Version. It used to be only in a green back uh, Bible cover, but they have it in different colors now. But the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, when it comes to like First John, um, the very first chapter of St. John, our John, the, the um, Gospel of John, there, the very first chapter, the very first word, verse, it says, in the beginning, God was with, uh, in the beginning, God uh, just a minute, we're going to turn to it so you can see, first of all, what we have in our Bible, and then you can see what they have in their Bible. Here we go. So I want us to look at that right from the Word. Okay. In the beginning uh, was the Word, capitalized, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so that's the way it is in the Bible and uh, the way that it's written and the Greek and so on. But they've written it at the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was a God. Or sometimes they've translated a little differently, but it it is, they've translated it as a God. Well, that means then Really, they believe in gods, okay? One time somebody was showing me I was going to give them a New Testament, and and he did take the New Testament, even though he was Jehovah's Witness. But uh, he, I said, well, would you like the Bible app, which the Gideons have a Bible app that you can listen to the Bible and dramatize versions of the Bible and so on. And he said, oh, well, we have our own version. And so he showed me on the uh, his cell phone and then the internet. Yes, they do have their own. But then I took him to this verse that we looked at and where it talks about that Jesus is the Word and Jesus is God and he was in heaven. And then I showed him his version 
And so in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. And I say that means that you are saying that Jesus is not God, but that he is a God. And that means that you believe in many gods. You don't worship Jesus as one in the Holy Trinity, which they don't. They don't believe that Jesus is God. They do not believe that he is one in the Holy Trinity. So they don't believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in hell, uh, like the Bible teaches. And also, right here, as we're going to get into the 144,000, they claim that these are the only ones that are going to be saved. Okay, well, that is not it at all. In fact, they deny all, as far as I know, every true doctrine from the Word of God, they deny it. So please be on the watch, watch for the Watchtower people. That's their magazines, the Watchtower. And it's a false religion. And so as we're talking about the 144,000 today, some people are turned off immediately. And they say, well, that's what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. And they probably realize that that's not true, what they teach. And so they don't even want to study about this. No. We don't agree with the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong. They don't believe in government. They don't believe in birthdays. They don't believe in a lot of things. And uh, so we need to stick to the Word of God and realize that there are false witnesses in the earth today. And so let's go ahead and, and we're going to study it and know exactly what the Bible teaches. Don't be tricked by deceptions and false teaching and so here we have it says after this i saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth and at uh, the four corners of the earth so that's interesting isn't it uh, because it says the four corners of the earth. And you say, well, how do you get four corners of the earth when the earth is round? Well, there you can make uh, four corners, even though the earth is a sphere. All right. And so they, we have to see what it's talking about here so they're holding back the four winds of the earth and as you study in science there is such a thing okay that no wind might blow on the earth and uh, <clears throat> that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? So that the no wind might blow on earth or sea. I think I said tree there, I meant sea. Okay, or against any tree. There's the tree business. All right. So the wind, it's going to be held up so that it cannot get into blowing against. It can't be blowing against anything. Can you imagine what it would be like on the earth not having um, the wind blow? Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called wind. Now I watched. And uh, trying to uh, get onto the Gideon Bible app there. And we'll get into that uh, soon enough. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who have been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, <clears throat> Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees 
until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal, 144,000, okay, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. Now, this is very, very important that we understand these are Jews, and I don't know, uh, people try to make them out to be Christians and Christian witnesses. They are not Christian. Uh, they're not in the church. Because why? The church has already gone to heaven. Uh, the church started on the day of Pentecost. And uh, when God called the church out uh, before this time, chapter 4, remember, we talked about uh, before that, chapters 2 and 3 is about the church age, and then the outline of this book is the things that uh, were, and that's John with uh, Jesus, and the things that are, which is John with the churches at that time, and then things that will be after this. And so uh, the prophecy is going through to the future, the time that we're living in, the church is still here, almost 2,000 years later, and but the church is going to be taken out at any moment as we looked at in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through 18. We also looked at it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 and verses 51 and 52. Uh, Jesus said that he would build his church and that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, he also... Uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, talking about how that husbands are to love their wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, and how that he is coming for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And so that is the time of the church. But once, once the church is taken out of this earth, and by the way, the Holy Spirit as mentioned as he is holding back uh, wickedness in the world and so on. And we'll see that in when we study through Thessalonians. But there the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of in the sense that the church is taken out of the world. When the church is taken out, we are called salt and light. And we're to be salt and light in the world. And through the Holy Spirit living through us, that we are that. And uh, can you imagine when all believers are taken out of the earth, what it will be like. Satan will be able to have his way. All the things that he's been wanting to do. And uh, he's going to fill a man uh, just like Judas was filled. Uh, but this man is going to be very charismatic and set up his kingdom for seven years, which he's given permission to do that from God, or else God, uh, you know, God could have stopped him, but he's allowing it because of what is called Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is the Jews have one uh, seven-year period of their punishment left, because of what they have done. One is that because they rejected Jesus as the Messiah when he offered himself in Israel, uh, in Jerusalem, and they rejected him. So the Lord scattered them in 70 AD into all the world, and they've been that way. And now, uh, in our time, they've come back to Israel. They're coming back from all over the world because of persecution, basically, not because of belief in something that's going to happen for them in the end time. Uh, but they have come back in unbelief, but they are coming back. And even Christians are helping them come back. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, many Christians are going to Israel and wanting to see the Holy Land now. And uh, that started in uh, 1947 to 48 in there. They became a nation again. And then, uh, and just recently, 
Jerusalem was allowed to become the capital again. Uh, President Trump uh, made that possible. And so we see the the shapings up of, and even in Israel right now, they have four, uh, at the time of this uh, study, they have four uh, red heifers, which they have to just have one of them, a pure red heifer without any blemishes, without any spots other than red, and they can start their sacrifices again. They have to uh, have uh, set aside their nation and go around and, and sprinkle the ashes of the red heifer after it's sacrificed to uh, cleanse the nation and to start their sacrifices again with their temple. And their temple is, uh, everything is prepared for it except for um, actually starting uh, the building on the temple. And we talked about that yesterday, how it's a good possibility that it's not going to be built right there where the Dome of the Rock is, uh, because that would cause consternation around the world for the Muslim people. But uh, rather in the city of David, they believe that those that are researching this believe that's where the temple was, not where the Wailing Wall is, because Jesus said not one stone would be left upon another. And so uh, after the church is taken out, the Jewish people are left here. Okay, those that are not believers and Jesus Christ as their Messiah and Lord and Savior. Well, and so then God starts a new program. And I don't know, sometimes uh, when God does something new and different, people uh, have a trouble with it. Like when Jesus came, the Jewish people, all the religious leaders of Israel, the Sanhedrin, except for two, uh, could not accept Jesus as their Messiah. Well, I'm telling you, the Lord is doing a different work today. Hello, Esther and Emmanuel, and Lord bless you. And so we're seeing something take place that is different. And what is going to happen when the church is taken out of the world? The, the Lord says that before any destruction starts, any judgment that he's going to bring on the world, he says that I'm choosing out 144,000 Jews for Jesus. They will be like uh, Paul in the Bible. Can you imagine 144,000 Pauls going around the earth sharing the gospel that Jesus is the Messiah, that he died and rose again? Well, that's what's going to be happening. And these cannot be killed. Now we're going to read the list. They're all Jewish people. And people, even some Christians will say, oh, well, we don't know who these are and so on. Well, they disbelieve the word of God and see what it says. Take it at its uh, face value, just to like it says. So we're going to read the list. And these are the tribes, the tribe <clears throat> the, in the Bible. Uh, there are uh, some people who question, well, why is Joseph there instead of Ephraim? And, and some question, uh, well, why is uh, Dan, uh, let's see, uh, not there, and Levi is. You know what? It's up to God who he chooses. These are going to be sealed, and they can't be killed during the whole uh, time that they're here on the earth uh, during the tribulation time. So we're going to read the list of these names, and uh, but these are definitely chosen out, and they're going to be believers. And some people say, well, how are there believers? Because the church is taken out. There will be many believers, people that receive the Lord, and we believe these are the first fruits of the Jewish people. And when their rapture takes place, they receive Christ as their Messiah. Okay, 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Nephtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 
12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. <clears throat> Again, it's God's choice who he chooses, and he seals these. And um, that's up to him, okay? And they can't be killed, and they are witnesses for the Lord. Think about in our time, Billy Graham led millions to the Lord. Well, these people are going to lead millions to the Lord. And uh, yes, there are people that are saved during the tribulation time. Uh, there are limits uh, for those that had a clear presentation, I believe, and uh, they and they didn't receive the light that was given to them. And then they're going to be um, hardened. Uh, and it talks about that in Thessalonians. But the, there's many that will receive the Lord. And no doubt be, when the rapture takes place, uh, they will see that and they will turn to the Lord. But uh, also the Lord will have other witnesses. There are... Um, three angels at least that fly around the earth and they're calling out uh, don't take the mark of the beast uh believe in uh, in the creator the the god of hosts the um god of the universe and the creator of the universe and to worship him and uh then you have two witnesses in israel that are going to be prophesying and we believe that they are um probably Enoch and Elijah uh, that will return. Uh, some think that it might be Moses, but Enoch and Elijah did not die, and they were taken to heaven alive. And uh, says that you know that uh, during that time they will uh, be not be able to be killed to begin with, but then they are able to be killed after they've done their prophesying, but after three days, they're going to rise again and uh, go up to heaven in front of everybody. So you have witnesses that are getting the gospel out. And during this time, uh, more people, Jewish people, the Jews are going to receive the Lord. Now, I was interested to hear recently on the news, and I was saying that, you know, you can't really share the gospel in Israel very effectively. And However, some of us did leave some New Testaments and that sort of thing in different locations, and I'm sure other people. And there are uh, some, there's uh, several churches that are Christian churches, and uh, there is a, a Catholic church, as far as I remember. There is the Orthodox Church, and then there are some evangelical churches, but not very many in Israel. And I said it's very hard to witness there and you could probably get in trouble just for sharing the gospel in Israel but something's happened recently that shows me that this is starting to break a little bit uh, these laws that they have because they said that uh, they're having allowing Christian broadcasting now to be in Israel I don't know if it's from around Israel broadcast into Israel or right in Israel uh, there's uh, Christian stations coming up. Now, that's very interesting, isn't it? Because the gospel's getting out, and we're hearing of many Jews that are receiving Christ as their Lord and Savior, as their Messiah, Mashiach. Uh, and so it's very exciting to see what God is doing in Israel. We believe that by the midpoint of the tribulation, that all the Jews have said, will be believe in Jesus as the Messiah and repent of their not accepting him. So be patient. God is at work and he will save the Jewish people. Um, then we'll talk about that as to how many will be um, spared and so on. Uh, and then it says, after this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. 
and uh, that's why we have a picture of the, um, the lion and the lamb uh, on the wall here, and sits on the throne, and to the lamb, and all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, <coughs> saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. All right. So now you say, well, who are these people? And some people get them mixed up with the 144,000 we just looked at, but it's not. Um, there are little parentheses. Uh, by and large, the book of Revelation goes right through in chronological order. But just like we talked about before in a football game, uh, you will see that they'll stop the camera and they will go back and show up from different positions and that sort of thing. And um, in this case, God already knows everything is going to happen. There's nothing that God learns as he goes along. Uh, he asks questions and so on of people, but he already knows the answer. He, he knows everything. He knows the beginning and the end and everything in between. He knows everything that could have been uh, if things were different and so on. He, his mind is... He is eternal, and he is omniscient. That means that he knows everything. He's all-powerful. He is also uh, omnipresent. That means he's every, every place at once, all the time. So there's no surprises for him. And he tells you that after these people have witnessed on the earth, he, he speeds forward a little bit, and there's a little parenthesis here. Okay, you want to see what happened as a result of the 144,000? There's a multitude from all over the earth that receives the Lord uh, from their witness and from the witness of the angels, the three angels, at least three, that are sharing the gospel. And then there's also the two witnesses. And you want to see what it's like after that? multitudes you can't number them when it says multitudes it uh it'd be god knows how many there are but this multitudes of people saved from around the earth uh during this uh, tribulation time okay and so that's a little fast forward and so we see the result of their witnessing on the earth and what it's going to be like but then it goes on to say then one of the elders addressed me saying who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. <laughs> and he said to me, and so it's interesting, the conversation that John is having uh, with the elders here. And he says, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they're ones that have believed now in Jesus as the Messiah and as their Savior. And they've uh, put their trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. All right. The Lamb of God. Therefore, they are before the throne of God. They're saved and now uh, they were killed. Uh, and they're now before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more. During the tribulation time, they were uh, not allowed to buy or sell because if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell. And when they do find you, they're going to chop your head off. So, but a lot of the people will try to uh, find out, you know, to escape believers that they won't take the mark. 
and they'll go to the forests, the deserts, and the hills, the mountains, and places to hide. But when they're found because of technology and so on, and uh, they, and through Satan, uh, demons as well, they shall hunger no more and when they're in heaven, neither uh, thirst any more, uh, thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them. Uh, they probably weren't uh, close well, but during the, we're going to look at how the sun's heat is going to be scorching people, nor any scorching heat for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So this is a little fast forward. Most of the things in Revelation are in chronicle, chronological order. But here's a little clip of what is going to be like uh, all the people that will be saved during this time. Even though it will be very difficult, they will be persecuted. Uh, they will be imprisoned. They will be killed. Uh, they won't be able to buy or sell. Uh, they're going to have to flee for their lives, and so they're going to be in very hard situations. But now they're in heaven. We get to see them. The result of this uh, witness of the 144,000 uh, Billy Grahams for the Lord, or 144,000 Pauls as evangelists, and leading many to the Lord. And so it's so wonderful to think about that and those that receive the Lord. Now, uh, by the way, if you have questions or comments, I'd be glad to take those. And uh, it's uh, easy to write those up. If uh, you go to YouTube now, we're on YouTube, and please check us out there, Gary Pinnell or Gary Thomas Pinnell, Gary T. Pinnell. Uh, and then also, uh, you could put in Bible hyphen Christian. Uh, the you could put in on YouTube, uh, like the study today, uh, Revelation chapter 7. Uh, it, it takes me about a half hour before I can get it on after we finish this study. And by the way, I would encourage you to start getting on a different site besides, I used to have over 400 people on Messenger with Facebook uh, that got this message that we're having here right now. But now it, I try to send out to 100 people and it gives, them, gives me less than 30 that it actually goes to. So I'm sharing with you right now. It's very important that you try to find us on uh, YouTube, which is not too hard to find. You have to look a little bit because we're rather new on YouTube uh, as far as the Bible studies here. So please go there and find us. And then also, if you go to Bible, hyphen christian.org our website then you can find us there as well because i'm telling you that pretty soon i probably will not be able to send anything out on facebook like you're getting now i don't know how long that will last as far as i shouldn't say facebook on uh, messenger facebook so far they have allowed me to do that but uh, you don't know uh, so if it ever stops and you used to get us on Messenger, go to YouTube and you'll find us there. That's just a very important message to give. Now, in closing here, we're going to listen, God willing, to um, Revelation chapter 7. And uh, so we'll get that for you right now, God willing, here, and let you listen to that on the bio, uh, Gideon Bible app. Revelation 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel.
12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi. 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar. 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun. 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph. 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes okay and so we have um, the revelation 8 we'll wait on revelation 8 for tomorrow lord willing but let's close in a word of prayer at this time father we just thank you for this time that we've had to study your word we know it's all true that it's all going to happen exactly like you said in spite of the fact that many people around the world do not believe, they are like those before the flood that would not believe. And I pray now that people will believe before the rapture takes place and they will receive you as Lord and Savior. I pray all these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.